Making life decisions can be hard, especially when choosing the right college to pursue higher education. But you have the power to make the right decision. With the Academy of Science and Technology provides holistic technical education and will help you shape a brighter future for you. Vidya is not for profit, 100% charitable organization with the vision of progress through education with the legacy of academic excellence since 2000. Myself, Victoria Lambi, Associate Professor in the Department of Applied Science with the Academy of Science and Technology. Our topic is differentiation. See, it's a beautiful operator in the wonderful branch of mathematics. In this video, I would like to answer the question, what is differentiation geometrically? To answer this question, I have drawn a straight line. We know, slope at every point on the straight line is same. That is, at here or here, everywhere the slope is same. How can we calculate the slope on a straight line? For that, you consider a right angle triangle with the sides delta y and delta x. Then slope is delta y by delta x. That is change in y divided by change in x. Next consider a curve. We know slope at every point on the curve is different. Uh, here it has a small slope, but here it has a big slope. Suppose we wish to find slope at any point on the curve. Let us take an arbitrary point on the curve. Let it be x. We wish to find the slope at this point. For that, you consider a small portion of the curve. And assume you consider this small portion of the curve. Since it is a very small portion of the curve, we can consider it as a straight line. We know slope at every point on the straight line is same. How can we calculate the slope of a straight line? For that you may consider a right angle triangle with the side lines delta y and delta x. Let the curve be fx. Any function in a single variable always represents a curve. See since it is delta x, this point is x plus delta x. I wish to rewrite this uh, this point in terms of f. It is f of x and here it is f of x plus delta x. See, slope of this straight line is delta y by delta x. What is delta y in terms of f? It is f of x plus delta x minus fx by delta x. Actually, this slope is not exactly equal to this one because here we made a wrong assumption. Actually, it's a curve, but we made a wrong assumption that it's a straight line. So, slope is approximately equal to. For getting the exact slope at this point, we have to take delta x tends to 0. So, the exact slope is limit delta x tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus fx divided by delta x. See, this limit, I think you are familiar with this limit and it is nothing but our f dash x. So, Slope at this point, slope at the point x is f dash x. That is, derivative of fx at the point x is slope. So, we can conclude geometrically derivative is the slope of the curve at, at a point. We have a function fx. You know, the different techniques for finding its derivative. You always keep in your mind certain basic results and rules in differentiation. Basic results like derivative of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1. Uh, derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x itself. Derivative of log x is 1 by x and so on. And again the rules in differentiation are derivative of a constant is 0. Derivative of sum is sum of the derivatives. This, uh, derivative of difference is difference of the derivatives. 
and we can combine these properties as the linear property of the differential operator. It has a lot of applications in engineering and again we have the product rule, quotient rule and chain rule. See the chain rule is derivative of f of gx that is f dash g of x into g dash x. Just for an illustration, you consider sin e raised to x square. Suppose we wish to write the derivative of this function. See, basically it is sine function. Derivative of sine theta is cos theta. So, of course, in the place of theta, it is e raised to x square. Again, you have to multiply by the derivative of e raised to x square. We know derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x itself. In the place of x, it is x squared. So, again, you have to multiply by its derivative, which is 2x. So, the answer is 2x cos e raised to x squared into e raised to x. This is chain rule of differentiation. Also, notice that dy by dx is 1 by dx by dy. And again, dy by dx is dy by du into du by dx. Now, based on these results, now you are ready for differentiating almost all functions. Okay. So it is the rate at which one quantity changes with respect to another. Uh, see, from your physics class, you noticed the rate of change of displacement with respect to time is velocity. That is, ds by dt is equal to velocity. And again, rate of change of velocity with respect to time is acceleration. And again, uh, rate of change of acceleration with respect to time is jerk and so on. So, we can conclude, geometrically, derivative is the slope of a curve at a given point on the curve. And also, it is the rate at which one quantity changes with respect to another. Really, it has a lot of applications in engineering. Uh, Applications of differentiation is the language of engineers, scientists and in many areas. We conclude this video by giving a few tricks in differentiation. You consider y is equal to 2x plus 1 the whole raised to 1 by 3. My question is what is dy by dx? You do it in your own way, I do it in my own way. See here, y cube is equal to 2x plus 1. So, x is y cube minus 1 by 2. So, what is dy by dx? Sorry, dx by dy. It is 3y square by 2. So, what is dy by dx? It is 2 by 3y square. I would like to find the third derivative of sin x into x raised to 4 plus 1. It's third derivative. For that, you consider the Pascal's triangle. 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. This is the coefficient of the 0th derivative. It is the first derivative. These are the coefficients of the second derivative. These are the coefficients of the third derivative. Here we have to find the third derivative of this product. So you keep 1, 3, 3, 1 as the coefficients. So its answer is 1, 1. You take one function, let it be sin x. You write it here and you write its successive derivatives continuously. Derivative of sin x is cos x. Derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Derivative of minus sin x is minus cos x. Next you put the second function x raised to 4 plus 1 here. You write its successive derivatives in, the, in this direction. So here you have to write 4x cube. Here you have to write 12x squared. Here 24x. See, this is the third derivative of this product. 
Thus the answer is 24x sin x plus 36x square cos x minus 12x cube sin x minus cos x into x raised to 4 plus 1. Next one. Find the fourth derivative of e raised to x, x raised to 5. Fourth derivative. So its coefficients are, see in the Pascal's triangle, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So you have to keep the coefficients as, so for writing its fourth derivative, you have to keep the coefficients as 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. See, you take one function, e raised to x. You put it here and write its successive derivatives. See, all its derivatives are e raised to x. So, you can take e raised to x common outside. Next, you put x raised to 5 here. Because of the symmetry of the coefficients, you can also put x raised to 5 here. x raised to 5, here 5x five raised to 4, here 20x cubed. Here 60x square, here 120x. So the derivative is e raised to x into 120x plus 240x square plus 120x cube plus 20x square x raised to 4 plus x raised to 5. Hope you enjoy the section.